here we go. Um, first off, I want to introduce myself. For those of you who don't know, I'm Karen Dion, and I'm the internationally best-selling author of two novels of psychological suspense. One is called The Marsh King's Daughter, and the other is called The Wicked Sister, and they're both with G.P. Putnam's Sons. So, Lori Rader Day is the Edgar Award-nominated author of The Lucky One. Her next novel is Death at Greenway, set during World War II at Agatha Christie's holiday home. Gary Phillips has written novels, comics, radio plays, novellas, 65 or so short stories, and worked some in television. His most recent book is Matthew Henson and the Ice Temple of Harlem. Samantha Downing is the author of My Lovely Wife, which was nominated for Edgar, the McCavity, and ITW Awards. Her second book, He Started It, came out in July. And Stephen Mack Jones is the author of the August Snow Thriller series published by Soho Press. The series includes the titles August Snow, Lives Laid Away, and the newest entry, Dead of Winter, which is going to be released May 4th, 2021. And I have to add uh, that Stephen's books are set in Detroit. Uh, I live in the Detroit area, so does Stephen. So we've done a lot of in-person events together and it's really fun to be together tonight. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. So um, first thing we're going to do is play kind of a quick get to know you game with our authors of 20 or so questions. Uh, some of the author, uh, some of the questions, we, we even have official backroom cards. Can you see that? Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. isn't that Ooh. nice with the questions? <clears throat> yeah. Nice. And they're supposed to be easy, fun. I hope they don't trip anybody up. So we're going to start with you, Lori. No. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Here we go. I hope it doesn't trip <clears throat> you up, Lori. <laughs> Let's do it. Kittens or puppies? Puppies. <laughs> okay. Do you have a dog? I do. Clementine. She's six months old. What what kind? Of, what breed? Uh, she's part Chow, part German Shepherd, and half total mystery meat. Oh, very. Partly good. Tasmanian Devil, I think. Okay. Nice. Gary, not kittens or puppies, but what other animal would you like to have as a pet? <laughs> oh Lord. Uh, how about a. Um... Oh, snake. Okay. That's very revealing of a person's personality. It would be well, they're, interesting they're, they're to ask low, each of you that. Yeah, they're low maintenance, you know. Yeah. yeah. You, you gotta walk them. Yeah. Cold blooded. Yeah. Cold blooded, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Samantha, what was your favorite book as a child? Um, I loved the Encyclopedia Brown books. Yeah, I, I, don't, I can't think of one with a specific title off the top of my head, but hmm. I loved Encyclopedia Brown. Nice. Stephen, what book made yes. you want to be a writer? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Okay. What book made you want to be a writer? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very good. Very good. You're going to leave it at that? You're not going to elaborate? Uh, Okay. I'm going to leave it at that. All right. That works. Lori, what's your favorite book of all time? Oh, uh, the Shipping News by Annie Prue. Mm, nice. Nice. I love that too. Um, Gary, when do you feel the most creative? Uh, morning. Oh, no. It used to be at the gym. So that, that, that's actually true. Okay. Because yeah. I'm not thinking about anything, because I can actually think about the book working out. Now I can't do it. So, I, I, yeah, it's all lost. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I knew an author once who, who she got waterproof crayons because she was most creative in the shower and she had to be. Oh, that's wild. Down the idea. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Samantha, do you write on paper or with a keyboard? Keyboard. Never on paper for me. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to ask you the same question too. Are you a plotter or a pantser? Me? Oh yeah, Samantha. Sorry. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, pantser, complete pantser. Uh huh. Uh huh. I admire pantsers, <laughs> and I, hopefully everybody in the audience knows what we're talking about here. <laughs> means do you outline or do you do you know in advance what the novel's going to be or do you just wing it? So she wings it, Stephen. What word do you use too much when you're writing? Said. 
and MF. <laughs> I, I usually edit out the MF. Mm. So. But in the first draft, they're, they're just there, right? The first draft, it's oh, just oh. ugly. Hilarious. It's, it's okay. ugly. Um, Lori, we're back to you. What's the best thing about being a writer? Uh, the best thing about being a mystery writer is the mystery community. It's really welcoming, and I, I just love all the people in it. I would absolutely agree. Yes. Gary, what's the worst thing about being a writer? Um, typing the end I was, is the best and the worst. Uh, I'm working on a book now, and I'm, I'm loving the characters, and uh, I'm kind of, you know, well, I'm itching to get back to them, but I'm sad to see them go at this, at this juncture. Nice, nice. Yeah. Samantha, what's the best piece of advice you got from another writer? Oh, what's the best piece of advice I ever got from another writer? Gosh, there's been a lot. Um, I think that the best piece of advice I ever got was probably not to worry about the first draft as much. Mm -hmm. And that you can go back and you can edit. I have a tendency to edit as I write because I'm a pantser. So I'm constantly changing things. And I get hung up going backward. And I have to just go forward and finish it. So that, for, that the first draft can just be a mess. So I have to get through it. Great advice, yes. Stephen, what's one thing you always wanted to try but have been too scared to do? Uh, absinthe. Um... <laughs> Uh, I, just, uh, uh, you know, I know that it's uh, come back in style, but uh, 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 you know, I just, I just can't, I can't do it. You can, you can buy it legally now, and uh, but no, um, I, I down with absinthe. There we go. Yeah. That's, that, that, that's probably wise. Um, Lori, we have time for one more round of questions. What's the most exciting thing in your life right now? Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> the most exciting thing in my life right now. We got a Christmas tree today. Uh, and my puppy immediately ate something from the uh, decorations. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty exciting. Not good exciting. It's, it's, it sounds right. like Bad you know, exciting? pandemic right. shutdown exciting. It does. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Gary, if you, you were stuck on a desert island, what's the one book you couldn't live without? Oh, my God. Uh, okay, it's easy. Um, the Collected, it's also the book that inspired me. It's The Collected Stories, The Collected uh, 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 Twilight Zone Short Stories by Rod Serling. Yeah, that sounds like good desert island yeah, reading. Yeah. <laughs> Samantha, what's the last book you read that made you cry? that made me cry. I was probably the worst person to get this question because I do not read books that make me cry. So <laughs> I don't even have an answer. Like, I don't even, I don't read those kind of books at all. So <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> Steve, last question. Which of your novels are you most proud of? Uh, the last one. Listen, um, uh, the one that's coming out in, um, May, I forget when they're coming out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, nice. that's, yeah. Yeah, that's how we should feel, right? That's it, yeah. that's right. I don't think so. Yeah, so before we move to the breakout rooms, um, the authors have come prepared with a book recommendation. So Lori, let's start with you. What mm -hmm. do you think everybody should read? Well, I said uh, Broken Places by Tracy Clark. I love this character. It's just a really... Um, I don't know, sometimes you just read uh, a new character, usually standalones for me, I love standalones, but sometimes you read a new first in a series and you think you're in such good hands. And that's how I feel about this series. And then uh, it was said that we should pick something that was published in the pandemic, but Tracy's latest in this mm. series was just published. So I had this to look forward to. It's in my house. I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but this series is amazing. It's the Cass Rain series by, series by Tracy Clark. It's set here in Chicago. Very nice. Very good. Gary, what book are you recommending? Well, it wasn't published in the pandemic. It's, it, it's called uh, uh, The Perfectionist by Simon Winchester. It's a nonfiction book. 
It's about the history of precision engineering. I, I don't have a background in engineering, but my uh, dad was a mechanic. And so I grew up uh, kind of working on uh, old cars and back in the days of carburetors and what have you. And so I, I went, when occasionally when, when we were, uh, Pop was rebuilding something, and I would go to the place where you where they would hone down the, the the heads that go on the cars and the and the pistons that go in them, which are very you know have to be very precision, very precise uh, as they have to put these together. I was always quite amazed at sort of watching that process and, and watching the machinery and the, the measurements and what have you. So I've always uh, I've always had a fondness for that kind of um, uh, I don't know that kind of working, that kind of uh, uh, eye to detail. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, and, sure. and thus, and thus, I think it translates to some to some extent in 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 my work. Not that I'm a perfectionist, but I think the idea that I I like to think that I have an eye for detail. Mm -hmm. Very nice, yeah. very nice. How about you, Samantha? What book are you recommending? Um, I recommended the Escape Room by Megan Golden, and I'll have to put this up on my. You can see that cover. It's not reflecting in the light. This is. Um, this was her debut book that came out in 2019, and it is just a very unique thriller uh, with a different kind of storyline. And it does have to do with an escape room and a group of people that are trapped together. And it just was uh, very unique in, in the domestic thriller, psychological thriller genre. Nice, nice. And Steve? I'm reading... Um... Robert B. Parker's Grudge Match by Mr. Mike Lupica. Um, I have loved Robert B. Parker's stuff for, for ages. And I call, I can't get out of the habit of calling uh, this guy Mr. Mike Lupica because uh, that's what I was reading to my young son. Um, he was a phenomenal YA writer, and when Parker passed away, I was heartbroken and thought, nobody, it should end there. Um, but uh, Mike Lupica, Mr. Lupica, and Ace Atkins have proven to me that uh, the stories can go on, and, and they go on very well. That's fantastic. Wasn't that fun? We hope that you enjoyed this taste of what a backroom event is like. The best part comes immediately after when the audience is divided into breakout rooms and the authors visit each room in turn. We'd love to show you what a breakout session is like because these relaxed face-to-face -face conversations are the hallmark of our backroom events. But breakout sessions are never recorded. What's said in the backroom stays in the backroom. Mm -hmm.